This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another Day in the Arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are going to play Elementals. It is probably their last go-round uh, for me, because Elementals, the core of the deck, Risen Reef, Cavalier of Thorns, Omnath, they are from M20, which is going to be rotating soon. And so with the new bands that just happened in Standard, maybe it's time for Elementals to have a little bit of fun. Instead of being a full tribal, I, just, I wanted to surround them with some friends who can do really cool stuff. We've got Terror of the Peaks as a fun of. We've got Rada, Heart of Keld as another fun of to help hit those land drops. We have four copies of Uro because building around Uro is probably going to be a thing in Standard for a long time. And this is one of the last rides for Uro with Cavalier of Thorns, a card that helps fill the graveyard for it. We also have Genesis Ultimatum as our top end, a very exciting ultimatum card that maybe there won't be Aethergust and Mystical Dispute to mess with it. And we have Ugin the Spirit Dragon to either ramp into or to play off the ultimatum for a lot of excitement. And then the flex spot, kind of the last four cards, I wanted removal, I wanted to not die. So I grabbed Bonecrusher Giant. Bonecrusher Giant is one of the good cards for standard as far as buying time especially if you're on the draw and best of one it's really hard to catch up stabilize but if you can go turn two bone crusher turn three play the giant sometimes that slows the opponent down long enough for you to be able to do what you need to do and it kills priest of forgotten gods pelt collector a lot of the must kill early threats uh, runaway steamkin is another one so i went with bone crusher giant which is a little off brand being more of an adventure which is another team or deck we'll have to get back into at some point the mana base we i cut all the way down to one steam vents Number one, I was taking too much damage from my ma my lands. It seemed like I was drawing way too many shock lands every game, so the full 12 was causing me too much pain. So I'm all the way down to one steam vents with a couple of temples. The other reason, this doesn't help cast Cavalier of Thorns. If you, you draw two or three steam vents in your first uh, 10 cards, then casting Cavalier of Thorns becomes very difficult to do. So that's why you see less steam vents, more of everything else, including temples, less pain and more green. All right, that's an introduction to the deck. What would I predict that this is going to do? I, I think the format might still be too aggressive. If the opponent plays one drop, two drop, three drop, whether we're on the draw or the play, we would need a really good hand to keep up and keep them from just running us over. And yeah, if we're not, we don't sweep the board unless we ramp into Ugin. And best of one is usually either sweepers or creatures. Like you have to choose one or the other. It's very hard to play something in the middle most of the time. So we'll see how that plays out if we're able to ramp into Ugin and get those aggro decks or if Bonecrusher Giant can hold it off long enough. Let's dive on in and let the nonsense begin. I can't turn away a turn three Omnath with a Leafkin to deal two, but this hand might be too slow. Being on the draw is scary, but in, we are potentially playing ramp, kill thingy, Nissa with a body. So let's see what the opponent does. Do not need second Nissa right now. The next thing we want is a payoff at the end. Okay. If they're on mono green, they're on a slow start. And I said we need a payoff at the end. Look what we drew. Ugin the freaking spirit dragon. That can do the job. Whoa. What is our opponent up to? This might be one of those crazy citadel decks. I'm excited. So do we want an Omnath that doesn't kill this? I don't think so. I think we want the Uro. I probably didn't have to shock there, but I can also block with this. And now, uh, because we shocked there, I got lucky. This kind of got paid because we get to play another Leafkin and ramp again. Let's get the blue source so we have double blue for Uro. Leafkin Druid. Six total mana going into next turn. Our opponent could, let's see. Yeah, they might have Citadel ready for next turn, so. It's an interesting race, and they show us five colors. What if they're secret shrines? <sighs> secret shrines. Um, hmm. 
I can play Nissa and make five mana so that can play Cav. No, I can't. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm missing the land drop for that. I can play Nissa and make four mana. I think we just lead with the Cav. This is a pretty big call. Of course, if we play Nissa and they don't deal with it, they're in trouble, right? So let's do like this. And then we untap the island, play a Risen Reef. And let's put that on the field. Looking good. What does their deck do? Ugin the Ineffable. Bye bye, Nessa. We still have a ton of mana thanks to Leafkin Druids being turned on. We'll follow Haven. Okay, yeah, they. I mean, they might be an Ugin rant deck of their own, and maybe they play Golos, and that's why they have all the colors. I'm not sure. Looks pretty cool. All right. But do we play our own Ugin? We have five elementals now, so the Omnath definitely kills the Dryad. And then we can play Cavalier. I guess that's better than playing Ugin. We don't need to wipe our own board, right? I mean, Ugin's pretty cool. But yeah, let's make this play. Ultimatum. Hopefully we get to use that. All right, so first you go face, you take out Ugin the Ineffable. Thorn up. All the triggers into the hand. Let's see, passage here gets us two pluses from the Omnath. We'll also just let it sit. We can sacrifice it at instant speed, put a counter on one of our elementals if we want to. And the opponent doesn't top deck Ugin, so they're they're gonna bounce. On the play, we get to play Uro on three, Omnath or Cavalier on four if we pull the land. I think that's keepable. Nissa, yeah. It looks really good until the opponent goes one drop, two drop, three drop, and it's enough power to just, like, they claim your land and or kill your land and attack your Nissa to death. So there are ways it could go wrong. We probably need to fetch another green. We need more forests. And our opponent with the turn one Pelt Collector. I'm just going to do the fetch now so they don't have to think about it later. All right, it's a good pair of early plays. One drop, two drop, like we feared. Let's go for the Uro and use the temple. We're gonna to try to scry our way to another land while well, we drew the land. So we're looking all right. Do I keep another one? We're going to have five next turn. We're probably going to play Cavalier. Does having another land in hand, especially a tap land, really help us? I don't think so. So we can put this one away. So quick questing beast, guys. That leaves a mark. Down to 14. Yep, hello. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, now they really want attention. Go to sleep. I'm curious to see how they'll attack here. If they only attack with the Questing Beast, I think the trade is fine, and we can get an Ugin with it. They play a Yorvo. And an Ooze. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. So do we get the Ugin? Or do we wait one more turn? We're not going to have the mana to cast the Ugin next turn. What will we have the mana to do? Nissa into... Yeah, let's keep... Let's take the damage. And let's protect the Nissa. Man, the tap land is a little brutal, but we can play an Uro. Let's see. If we don't play the Nissa and we play the Uro, there's a chance we can also play a Reef, but it's not great. Witness the ties that bind us all. The land 
And we have to exile the Ugin, which is rip. Ugin was one way to get back in the game, but playing big powerful stuff can help too. We definitely want to get the Uro out before the Ooze eats it. What can we set to the top? Another Reef? I think we need to do better. Yeah, tap lands bit us a little bit, but if we untap from here we'll be okay. But there's a lot of damage. And the opponent, if they have a Primal Might, it's easy pickings for them. So the turn 2 Uro, turn 3, or turn 3 Uro, turn 4 Cav, or Nissa, you can see it can just be too slow sometimes if they have the right draw. Everybody's coming in, and they're going face. So, like this block is fun, this block is fun. There's nothing in the graveyard for the ooze, so I'm taking one, two, th I'm taking eight. I could go to one. If I go to one with a block like this, that's really risky, but I keep both my cards and I'm probably okay. If they have a giant growth, I am dead. There's no creatures in the graveyard for the ooze, and we get rid of the ooze. All right, go to one. Gutsy. Poor Nissa, down to two. Okay, we're still here. We lived the turn. Now, how do we do it? This is one of those turns with a lot of options. It's gonna take me a minute. I think if we play an Omnath, and then we play a Cavalier. Actually, we can play the Reef first, right? So we lead on Reef. Draw another Nyssa. We play Omnath. That's four. Let's take down the Beast. The hardest thing to block. Take the action, put it onto the field. Put the counter on the Vigilance threat. There's a Bone Crusher Giant. We still have. Hmm. I could untap one of these lands, play the other Cavalier. Seems pretty good. I could. I think I'm attacking with the Uro. But I want to get all the lands played first. All right, Fable Passage is a really good one. We get two plus one plus one counters this way. And another one, wow. Pretty epic. Let's go get a forest here. Oops, no more in the deck, big brains. Epic big brain moment. I guess I'll grab the mountain. Mountain freeze up. The Bone Crusher Giant. And another. Although we only have one mountain. Alright, what's the next trick? Three life. I could shock this in now and play even more stuff. That's so bold. That is so bold, man. I'm doing it. I'm a maniac. I've, I've gone I've gone wild. They're saying CGB, no. Don't do it, CGB. But I must. All right, one more damage here. Down to five. One short of the double bone crusher. But I have another Omnath. One, two, three, four. yeah. This this is game. Wow, what a turn. That was insane. Holy smokes. 
On the draw, but we have Bone Crusher, so if the opponent gets aggressive, we can do that. If they don't get aggressive, we can ramp, so it's a good hand. It's a good hand, I think. We'll see how it holds up. Hollowed Fountain. I think I'm pretty happy to be in a control matchup. Usually the elemental deck can grind out control. Now the question here is do we actually go for the Leafkin? Because if we play it after we play the Reef, we get to draw a card. It's not like I need the mana badly, but it is a threat. The opponent may decide to respond to it and might use their mana. We'll see what happens. If they have like an Essence Scatter. Oh, we're Flyers. Outplayed. I got outplayed. Bone Crusher Giant would have been nice here. If they draw some cards and make this a bigger threat, I'm in trouble. Oof. Mega outplayed. Now well, what can you do? All I saw was blue and white, but if I had just passed the turn, now I'm probably going to lose. I'm way behind. Way behind. So we need to ramp. Part of me wants to get the Risen Reef down. We need to get up to Genesis Ultimatum, hit Ugin, things of that nature. But I think we need the ramp more than we need the Reef. Because if the Reef draws a card instead of hitting a land, we're going to feel really bad. Stick on the one mana. Could be a Spectral Sailor. Could be a Mystical Dispute. Could be an Opt. The plan is to shock this and play the Bone Crusher Giant. I think they have a Spectral Sailor. Yep. Stomp it before they can untap, play land, draw a card, pump the Vandal. Although they're going to pump it from the inside anyway. I guess we have to hope Nissa doesn't get countered and it's a good diversion because the opponent's just going to absolutely destroy Nyssa here. Ugh, the Staggering Insight Fairy Vandal. I don't have enough cards to get back the Uro. Having the spare mana isn't going to matter much. I do feel like I have to play a Reef though. I've got to keep ramping. I have to keep the deck going towards its destination. Omnath. Omnath right now does four. Four is not that... not enough for this Vandal. I think I need Ultimatum to hit Ugin. And that's just assuming it can even resolve. No! It's too much! Yeah, that's gonna be lethal. That's what I get for shocking the land. Outplayed from turn one. Respect. Alright, three straight games on the draw. No, that's not true. I was on the play against green, or I would have died for sure in that matchup. I was thinking back to a pregame. But, the hands are good. I mean, we can't say we're not doing stuff. It's just a slow deck out of the gates, unfortunately. Hmm, I really want to find a Bone Crusher Giant or a land that doesn't hurt me. So we're going to try Scrying right away. Nothing like Turn 1 Fervent Champion. What is this, Jund Fervent Champion? Oh boy. I don't, I don't know what I'm in for. I don't know what's coming. We need O3s. Lots of O3s. Crap. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> hey, they didn't get to play a Lovestruck Beast, right? That's the good news. I got more where that came from. Wow. Are you double shocking? Again, they didn't play the Lovestruck Beast. This is not the worst thing that could have happened. Your last card? Bankrupt in blood. Now I'm now I really don't know what's going on. 
I'm intrigued. Let's play Rada. See if we can find a land drop. Very lucky. Let's hold it, because next turn we could use it to trigger an Omnath. We, uh, we can also decide whether or not to shuffle this land away. Harbinger. Hexproof from black. 4-3. Another land we can play off the top. Omnath doesn't kill it. Uro ramps this turn. And then the three mana can play a Bone Crusher or a Reef. I'm okay with trading these, so I guess I want to get one of the Reefs down. Another Omnath we don't need. Or do we? Do we want this in our hand? Nah, let's shuffle it up. Green, green. Everything produces green so far. We do have double red. Sorry for tanking so much on these things. I, I have definitely lost a fair share of games to just not thinking about decisions like that enough. And now I'm scarred for life. I'm cursed. I have to do this. Um, yeah, we have to put the land in from our hand, so the one on top doesn't matter. But we get to sneak it onto the battlefield using the Risen Reef, so that's nice. Fun turn. Take that action. Nissa on top, sweet. Rada definitely did work this game. Got us from our mana, our bad mana position to seven lands on the field. You can mark a stop on your upkeep if you want to shuffle away your top card in case for some reason we don't want Anissa. I don't see why that would ever happen, but just something to think about. The opponent's willing to trade for Rada. Rada has done the job, so I'm happy with that. And yeah, we will draw the Nyssa. So this is a three. So if we play another Reef, we're going to decline to put this into our hand because I want to shock it in and I want to get another card draw for the Omnath and another counter from the passage at instant speed. Maybe I don't even have to do that actually, but whatever. Because it would have counted either way. Me and Fabled Passage and Omnath. Big, my, my brain just over overheats. The opponent's going to pack it up to the crazy amount of value. I'm, like, that game, I think, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I think if they had played their Lovestruck Beast and let me have a Leafkin Druid instead of using so much removal on them, I think I would have been in a much worse spot. I have not seen this card in forever, so very curious what the deck was really going for. All right, having a Bone Crusher Giant in this hand makes it keepable. So hopefully if our opponent's on the aggro plan, we just get to kill a thing, make a 4-3, and they don't get too far ahead. And yep, it's the one drop plan. The greatest and best plan in magic. That takes the Genesis Ultimatum. That's a feels bad. But at least it can't take the Giant. We could kill the Knight now. If they pass the turn without using it, what are they going to do? Probably play a Spawn of Mayhem, right? Getting back the Genesis Ultimatum anytime soon doesn't feel important. Let's stomp the knight. Hopefully no spawn. Or if they do have spawn, maybe we can Uro into a terror. Backup knight is annoying, but at least we can play something to get in the way. If I play the Bone Crusher Giant and they spend their turn pumping this, it's basically like I got an extra turn, but then at four mana I don't have anything great to do either. We could play the Reef. They have two mana up. They could be planning to kill whatever we play, so we should play something that gets us value. Let's do the Uro. 
No, let's try to save the Uro to go with the Terror. Let's play the Risen Reef. Even if they kill it, we get something out of the deal. Ramping is good. Hateful Eidolon, okay. Brutal. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Cavalier of Thorns, that is mega booty. If we play the Terror, they probably have something to do to it, right? But if we get up to enough mana where we can play Terror and something else the same turn, we're better off. Let's get the Mountain. And let's play the Cavalier. If they kill it with the trigger on the stack, we could get something like the uh, Risen Reef. Hmm. This takes triple blue, right? Trying to get it to show up. It's not showing up. There it is, yeah. So I don't need another red. But I might need more blue. Let's grab another red just in case we want to play Bone Crusher and Terror on the same turn. Wants to rumble. If they spend their whole turn with this play, I'm going to be okay with that. Gets the knight off the field. Gets me a Risen Reef back. Which we can play that with a Leafkin next turn. So that we get value from our Leafkin as well. The opponent might be able to kill it easily and use the Eidolon, but good for them. We'll put this into our hand because we can play it from hand and it comes in untapped. Hmm, do we Uro? Because we might hit a land. But I think it's better to make absolute sure that we get the value from this Leafkin Druid. Nissa, nice. Yep, opponent is impressed. <laughs> oh, and not, not fast enough to get the thanks. Now they get to kill our stuff, draw their cards. But our cards are, gen are generally more powerful, so gotta be okay with that. Demonic Embrace says, ha ha, I am more powerful. We will see though, Terror of the Peaks is ready. We save Cracking the Passage. We might draw an Omnath, which would pay it off pretty well. Probably could have done this with a Nissa this turn. That's an oops. Royal oops. Don't worry, I'll kill the free booter soon. Let's get rid of the thing that's currently demonic embraced. Twelve life, terror of the peaks. It's feeling okay. Nissa who shakes the world in hand probably should be on the battlefield if I'd played that better. Sometimes this the math too complicated. I get scurred. Come at me, bro. So do we take this? I think we'll just get this back for free. I love terror, I really do, but just take the trade. Just just put the Genesis Ultimatum in your hand. No! Okay, well. Which one do you want? The Nissa or the Ultimatum? A lot of, I, I think it's right to take the damage a lot of the time. Maybe even, probably most of the time it's right to take the damage from that attack. I just think one of the ways I lose this game is by letting my life total get too low. I know, big brain insights. All right, it's definitely Nissa time. All right, let's get back the Uro, I think. Maybe we play this first. Yeah, let's play Rada first. Nice. Land on top, which Uro can hit. No! 
another Uro on top. All right, so untap this pool, cast this Uro. I think the three life in the card are worth more than the three damage. And up to 18. Now Mono Black has a long way to go. Rankle. The Mogi's Favor means Rankle hits for 5 6 with the trigger. Kite Sail Freebooter. They get to take down Nissa. Rip Nissa. That's a pretty sweet card to have lurking, though. Uh, let's decline to put the land into play. We'll have plenty of opportunities to do that, and every time we do that with an Omnath on the field, it gets better. So this is three damage. We could get the Genesis Ultimatum. I won't have the mana to cast it this turn. Let's just get the Rankle dead. Put a counter on the Vigilance one. Draw the Ugin. One, two, three, four. Put another counter over here on the pool. Take another Omnath, why not? If they kill it, we will continue to smash. The opponent says good game. I mean, I I think we've got it. I just never like to say good game until the game is for sure over. I don't know. I'm a nervous, nervous person. Been, been BM'd a few times on that one. I'm scarred. Stop, stop. He's already dead. their opponent planning to go out like a G, as I described in my last video, with their own demonic, like paying light for that demonic embrace. Yes, they are. The Mogi's favors and the Eidolon package is interesting. It does keep the enchantments coming from the graveyard along with the embrace. So yeah, they're gonna go down swinging. Punch you for six. All right, they said good game earlier. I'll, I'll say it this time. And we'll let Big Rada do the thing. I like the Bone Crusher Giants. We're on the play. Feels like this hand can be good. Feels like I've got powerful cards in my hand to play a game of magic. I like it. I like it a lot. I I feel the opponent right now. I always need to read the triome. It's so hard to tell what they do. I am ready to Bone Crush. When the opponent leads on planes, I suspect aggro. It's the Hawk. You think they run God's Willing? Nope. They are a two hawk town. What do you think made them not play the hawk on turn one? I don't, I'm not really sure. There's definitely something fishy. Like they might be the aura deck. It makes me feel like I should do this now. There's just something off about the way they played. And usually, if I don't understand it, it's because they have all the information and I don't. So playing carefully, just doing something a little out of character isn't the worst idea. All right. Um, Heliod is here. We can get a Bone Crusher down in the next turn. We can Risen Reef and Leafkin Druid to make sure we get value from it. I think that's fine. 
the opponent has a glass casket for the reef, we lose out on a card from the Leafkin, which if we don't have to do that, we may as well not. It's not like we're in a hurry to ramp right this second. We don't have anything huge to play. And it's not like the opponent can really ignore the Bone Crusher Giant. Ooh, do they? Yeah, they're going to turn Heliod on here. Ouch. But they don't attack. Interesting. They don't want to take a hit from the Bone Crusher Giant because then their Speaker of the Heavens isn't as good. Um, man. So I think what we do is play a Bone Crusher Giant and another Bone Crusher Giant. We use Stomp to take out the Speaker, just so that that's not a, an option, not on the table. It turns off the Heliod. We will attack to make a dent in their life total, offer trades, which I don't think they want. Play the other giant. This is not looking good. I definitely need to find Ugin. Oh no. New plan is to stay alive as long as possible and find Ugin. They can make that Linden too big for the Bone Crusher. It makes the attack look really bad. Rough draw. If they don't attack with that Linden though, I'm going to be very grateful. But they definitely should. Right? Because it triggers, and then you put the counter on the Linden, and then I can't block it. But they're holding back. We've got them scared. Rada. At this point, we need to get the elementals going. Uro. Come on, Ugin, where are you? We need you. Oh my goodness, do we need you. This is gonna get disgusting. Our opponents played really conservative, and I think that's our only hope, is that they don't realize their own strength. absolutely destroyed and I had I had three bone crusher giants which are really good in the matchup but I used them up early because I didn't think the opponent had these cards they slow rolled them possibly I it's definitely real I could have been outplayed again like you can't lose in this attack dude go for it well done We need the Leafkin Druid, it's our 8th land, so we can't block it away. We're at 13, so we need to find a combination of blocks to make. And then we need to rip Ugin. It's the only way. So, um, this is 11, so I can leave these two unblocked. And we can block like this. This can sacrifice, though. When it does, it gains a life. So that would be 12. So it's still not enough to kill us. Ugin. 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 Or Genesis Ultimatum. One time. That will not do. Rip. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> Man, would have been nice. On the play, let's go. 
Resolution. Be more patient with my bone crushers if I draw them. Make sure I get to cast Ugin. Ugin's been hanging out way too long without doing much. That Leafkin Drew is a great top deck. Really great top deck here. Ooze. Ooze versus Uro. So, I guess we can play the Reef instead, right? We can definitely play the Reef instead. We'll still have mana for Nissa the next turn and then into Ugin. That's the plan. Plus the Reef sticks to the battlefield. That's a big deal. Because we can use it to block to defend Nissa to make sure Ugin happens. Also, just giving the Uro away to the Ooze feels bad. So, we, we avoid that fate. A lot of people running this card now. Um, there's a list that got to number one mythic. So a lot of people are into it. Here's Nissa. Let's animate the forest and play another Leafkin. I could offer a trade here, but I don't actually want the trade. I just want a jump block. And take that. And no attacks. Okay. I don't know if we can defend Nissa now. But we do have four creatures, so we can cast Ugin the hard way. The opponent attacked the questing beast at Nyssa. Yeah, I I understand. I understand, been there. Uh, I have done that. All right. Ugin, right? One, two, three, four. Gets rid of all these. Goodbye, elemental friends. Except for the land, who is not a color. Alright, let's see if Ugin can carry from here. It's possible I should have... Man, maybe I shouldn't have played this. If the opponent has a second questing beast, I lose the Ugin. That would have been smarter. All right, that is colorless. Ugin no exile. Ugin can deal three damage though. And this does two. So that was a really good draw. Nope, protection from multicolored. I'm full of the misplays. If the opponent takes the block, the Ugin kills it. So they can't do that. See if we hit off the Uro. Hitting a land would be good. Second Omnath, okay. It's a lot of damage. Do not ignore my draconic talents. Opponent is at eight. Close your eyes. Arcbow Ranger. And listen to the sounds of the wild. They can take out the Omnath and attack the Ugin. They can also just pump the Stone Coil. But they do have to watch their life total. They are really close to dead. I don't think they can kill the Ugin with this combination of cards. Not yet. They need something else. Omnath goes down. Get him. Get him indeed. All right, they've got a 1-1 one -one from the Lovestruck Beast and they're going to attack the Ugin. Okay. It's a draw. Can I, if I go green, I have two four mana left over. I can Omnath after the attack, I think. Let's have a, I need to play this out. So let's see. We play the Nyssa. We animate the land that can cast the Omnath, but can do it post-combat. We use the Ugin to remove the token, we hit for six, we play the Omnath post-combat, we hit for two. Lands. 
Exaxes. No, it's not even, because these are elementals. It's overkill. Old brain today. Is this hand too slow on the draw? Is turn four Cavalier or Nyssa too slow on the draw? It might be. I don't think I can mull it though. I think you have to try. We can hit the turn one Scryland to try to find a Bone Crusher Giant or something. And yeah, the opponent comes out guns blazing. Fervent Champion. This might just be Watch Me Die. Quality content. Oh, it is Watch Me Die. Oh my goodness. All right. It's Bone Crusher Giant or Doom. <laughs> no freaking way. Game is rigged. What if. What if the opponent has unbreakable formation? Let's just. Not mess around. Unfortunately, our mana is still going to drop us so low on life. I don't see us getting out of this. Take five. They miss a land drop, and we draw a land that doesn't hurt. Oh my gosh, we've been we've been so lucky this game. Trying to debate if I want to get the Triome out or the Scryland, and I guess I do the Scryland. <laughs> yep, another land to ship. How's it gonna be? Here they come. Will you pump the creature again? You will. They're missing lands and they're going face. Man, I have to pay two life to make this play. Which means I'm probably going to go to minimum three. I'm dead to a card like Infuriate, you guys. If I play a Bone Crusher Giant this turn and don't shock, that's not quite the case. I think the Bone Crusher Giant's the right play. If they just have a removal spell and they get him for three, and next turn I play the Cavalier, I'm not that much worse off. I guess I'm still dead to an Infuriate under those circumstances. I'm going this way because it means I can play the Uro the next turn, and then I can gain the life, so I'm just giving them a one turn window. If they've got it, they've got it. So be it. I know it's not enough cards for the Uro, but I can cycle a Triome if I draw a land. Okay, they're going wide. There we go and they pass the turn. Now I can shock to play the Uro. I'm probably just better off playing the Nyssa. Nyssa can play the Giant, but I have to tap the land. Oh man, this is close. Oh my goodness. So if I draw a Fabled Passage, then I get to bring Uro back, and I don't have to pay life to do it. If I don't, I have to shock, but then I end at five, which is a little better than I was. Failed. I'd rather have one blocker and be up to five if I could only have one blocker, you know? It's an affordable thing that can block. Let's keep it. And let's see if the opponent can kill us. It's unbelievably close. All they need is some kind of a trick. Venerable Knight. It looks like they might be convoking... 
Venerated Loxodon. Okay, we are still here. We are still here. Do I attack to gain the three life? Yes, because they have a creature that's less than three power. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I definitely don't want to shock anymore. It's amazing how painful the mana base has been. Absolutely amazing. All right, green, green, green. The lands that aren't forests. Here's the Nissa. So these are all doubled now. So I can play Risen Reef and Bone Crusher Giant. Then I can untap a Stomping Ground and have Stomp available. But I don't have enough red for that, do I? I need, I need double red at some point. So I should play this first. Yeah, I play this first. That's how it works. Just make sure I don't use any red to play the reef, and I'm fine. Actually, we'll play this. We'll untap this so it rep represents all kinds of spells, including blue ones. Is it Unbreakable Formation? Is it Chance for Glory? What is it? Yeah, here they come. We hold off on this. All right. We want as many survivable blocks as possible. Although chance for glory, I think we're just dead, right? Like this? They had to have the land. They top decked the land for it. Yeah, they did. They win. We lose. One more turn for the ultimatum, too. That's a rip. Oh my goodness, that was a tough game. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. And as you uh, can see, yeah, my fears about the deck were kind of realized. Not great against aggro. It's an interesting game, though, because it's always like, if you get the one turn... You know the one, the one where you have access to like Nyssa and Omnath and like multiple pieces of the puzzle. The deck just goes off and there's no coming back from it. The problem is that's usually turn five, six, seven, and a lot of the best of one format is kill you before then. So Bone Crusher, it was okay. It didn't do the job against white, but white is kind of a special case. You white can get too big for you to deal with. Um, whereas mono green and things like that, playing a 4-3 can be pretty sizable. Mono white, their pride mates are 8-8s. Eight they don't care. You know what I mean? So uh, with that in mind, I don't overly value the results against mono white. I think that's a tough matchup and that if you don't hit Ugin, you're probably going to lose. But the rest of the time, Bonecrusher was doing its best to hold its own, but some of those some of those starts are just too fast. That Knight's deck in particular with Chance for Glory uh, broke my heart, um, but that's the way it goes. Also, another thing about playing Mythic rank 20 through 30, I have not spent much time up here. This is the first season I've been to Mythic this fast and reached this high, and I basically have stopped, I stopped ranking up around 20. So I can win like four or five games, and I might get to like, 18, 17, 16. I lose one game, I lose like four ranks, I lose another, I lose 10. So it's, uh, I think what you're gonna see is probably a, a lot of deranking, no matter how I do with the deck, quite honestly. So let's look at the real stats here. I, I didn't cut any games. Uh, eight and four, 66% win rate, and we actually ranked from like, where was it? <laughs> we ranked from like about 
17 to 29 with our uh, 66% win rate. It's still a really fun deck though. Uh, I do recommend it. And if you like MTGA Assistant, there's a link in the description that you can click on to download it that does support the channel if you want to. So uh, we saved some fanfare till the end for the Cool Kids Club. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoy this. It's my 550th consecutive day of posting an MTG Arena video. Um, and I want to thank all of you for watching them. I did it for, you know, I, I posted videos before, but I wasn't nearly as committed to trying to get up every day and make an interesting video as I have been for the last year. Just the streak has really kept me going. Your participation, your comments, your enthusiasm keeps me going. And I want to thank all of you for that. And I want to celebrate the 550th consecutive video uh, and all the work that I put in by shouting out a smaller content creator who really, really wants my attention. And that's Bad Boy Gaming. Bad Boy Gaming made a video, a parody of me. Because that would stop us from... A mocking, a mocking of my ways. Um, so I, I've, got, I've got two things to say about this. Number one, I'm fine. I can definitely take uh, picking on me a little bit. I am totally cool with that. That is okay. Uh, number two, when I say that the Gruel deck that was showcased in this video was zero IQ, like I remember it's in the thumbnail, it says zero IQ wins. I'm actually talking about myself. <laughs> I'm the one with zero IQ. Um, the deck was built by somebody else and it's a very good deck. And I played it really badly, but still got a lot of wins. So in my opinion, uh, I'm the zero IQ to be honest with you guys. Um, so I think that uh, that that said, I definitely understand that there are people out there that watch me and they don't like the what they they don't like the arrogant side of my personality. I do understand that. Um, and I think that if you have any of that in you, if, if you're one of those who agrees that I'm arrogant, smug, and punchable, you will probably enjoy this video. So I'm not actually ashamed at all to call it out and give you guys some more entertainment. And me saying that I'm shouting out a smaller content creator, obviously that's a joke. Bad Boy Gaming has 129,000 subscribers. So um, in a way, I should be thanking him for making a parody video of me. I hope that you enjoy it some. Just know, I'm also well aware that I can, and sometimes are, very, very stupid. <laughs> very stupid. I have my moments. But hopefully that's part of the charm. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.